What's up guys? Today we're gonna be creating the Vijay Mahar look and style and then we're gonna take the editing and create a preset that edits with the same colors he used and I'm gonna give you the preset at the end of the video for free. So make sure you give me that like button because this will help me a lot and roll the intro. So if you click this video, you probably know who Vijay Mahar is. But for those of you who don't, he's a creative person who combines fashion, photography, editing, and modeling all together. So we can call him a multi-talented person. So for the past week, I've been studying every post, his style, everything about him. And I was able to come with a list of key factors that contribute into reaching his style. So let's get started. But before we get started, two little things I need to get off the way. Number one, the point of this video is not to create more copycats of Vijay Mahar and people just copying him exactly, but to explore different editing styles and expand our overall creativity. Second disclaimer, if you think in 10 minutes you're gonna be able to do exactly what Vijay Mahar is doing based on three or four years of practice, then I bet you're wrong. This is a process. It takes time and practice to reach a certain level. So based on my research, I was able to break down his style into three main categories. So category number one, it's styling, modeling, or grooming, which is mainly about him as a person. And I believe this is the hardest point to achieve because it's more about you as a person. It's harder to copy. It takes years to develop your character and to understand how to model, to understand how to stand, pose in front of the camera, and all of these very hard stuff that I'm gonna struggle with today. Also, you need years of taking care of your skin, your hair, and getting that perfect version look out of yourself. And finally, it's all about the little details he does, the rings he wear, all the stuff he does that kinda feels like it belongs to him. This is who he are and this is his own brand. I guess I'm not the best in styling, modeling or grooming, so I'm not gonna talk much about. I'm just gonna try to look as like, I got this like black chrome thing here. I'm wearing like a silver watch like he does. I'm trying as much as I can to copy his style in this area because I don't have much experience in that. Number two main category, which is photography. So photography is one of the most important factors in Vijay Mahar's work and we can break it down into several smaller parts starting with location. The way he chooses his locations is almost always the same. He always tend to go for bright locations with very little distraction because like we said it's all about him as a personal brand so he doesn't want distractions in the background he wants to be the dominant subject in the entire frame. Another thing regarding photography is the camera he's using. It's kinda hard to say exactly what camera he's using, but based on the quality of photos, based on the depth of field, it's probably a full frame, DSLR or mirrorless camera. The next point in photography is the lenses he used. The focal length Vijay Mahar usually uses is ranging from 50 millimeter to 85 millimeter. Probably 50 millimeter for the full body shots and 85 millimeter or even more for the closer straight on the face shots. And this focal range creates compression that makes you look more pleasing to the camera. And the last thing in photography is the lighting. Most of his photos are shot in a diffused light situation, meaning that there is no direct sun on his face. This can be achieved when the sky is completely cloudy, so the light is diffused, or if you simply stand in a place where there is shadow. This helps create a more flattering look since it makes all the pores in the face disappear, making the retouching work as well much easier. And finally, he has some photos that are shot in a studio using a studio lighting, and we're gonna break down one of them exactly. The last one is his editing. Editing is probably what made him actually famous because if you look through Instagram, you're gonna see a lot of people who are already looking good and taking good photos. But doing the editing is what's gonna separate you from the rest of the people and give you one step ahead so you can be more seen. So the first thing in editing he does is manipulation. And as you all know, Ali is my name. Manipulation is my game. <laughs> I guess that sounded so bad, right? 
Anyways, editing or manipulation is what made him stand out. If you look closely at his photos, he always makes sure he adds some sort of manipulation or editing in his images, but it's not something really crazy, it's something very subtle that helps the idea. The second editing technique he does in almost every photo he shoots is retouching. He always retouches his photos, he makes sure he has perfect skin using a technique called frequency separation, and then he backs it up with some dodging and burning, the healing brush tool, and finally some global dodging and burning on the face to sculpt the face to make the cheekbones look more popped up to adjust the nose. And finally, his style. As you can see when I scroll all the way through his feed, it's kind of look like it's all the same photo. So he has a very unique, consistent style. Most of his photos are a little bit desaturated with some cold tones in the shadows and a probably more brownish skin color, which can be achieved by even desaturating the skin tones a little bit more. Most of the time his background is a little bit blurred or out of focus to bring more attention to the main subject which is him. Also he has a lot of white in his photos meaning that the highlights are almost always blown out or too bright giving him that consistent white clean theme in his Instagram profile. And finally the thing that catches you the most is his eyes. He always tend to brighten his eyes a little bit that it looks more eye catchy and yet doesn't look like a vampire. So enough talking about his style and let's go start creating some of his images. So guys, this is the photo we're gonna be creating. Three things we always have to keep in mind. The first one is the modeling, how I'm gonna stand, the clothing, the posing, everything. Then the photography itself and finally the editing. So let's go. And so this is where I'll be sitting and this is my light setting. I have here like a side light at 45 degree angle and I have this small light here as a, working as a side light. And as you can see, I covered some part of it and added this book so the light doesn't spread all the way to the background. One hour later. Okay guys, as you can see, this is the photo straight out of the camera. We're gonna create a preset for this one and for the next one. But this situation is a little bit different from the one outdoor. So the preset for this one might not work on other outdoor photos and vice versa. Looking at his photos, this is like too orange or yellow. It has a lot of yellow, but his photos are more cold tone so i'm gonna bring down the temperature something just very subtle until i get rid of like the orange yellow skin tones i have also i'm gonna pump up the magentas a little bit to give bring back like some life to my skin then the highlights here <coughs> are a little bit blown out actually he has good highlights in his photos but it's usually done using the dodge and burn tool and not like overall highlight so i'm gonna bring down the highlights just a little bit and then in photoshop using the dodge and burn we're gonna do the highlights and we have like a lot of shadows i'm gonna open the shadows just a little bit then i'm gonna add some whites in the image to bring back like some of the highlights we brought down and i guess that's it maybe maybe some little clarity 
just to make things like pop out a little bit more then I'm gonna go to the tonal curve and then I'm gonna bring down like the shadows just a little bit but just very slightly don't go too strong with it because the effect is very strong and I'm gonna pull like the darkest point just a little bit up so I don't have absolute black I have gray then in the sharpness I'm gonna kill all the sharpness I like to do the sharpness after I'm done with all the editing and not before then here like this is where we're gonna do most of the work so we can achieve his look the way we want I believe the skin tones we want like the whole point of the colors is we want to get this brownish dark moody like look on the skin so I'm gonna bring the reds a little bit towards the orange and the orange a little bit towards the red then I'm gonna move to the saturation and in the saturation I'm gonna bring back the reds desaturate desaturate the oranges and I guess we're close to the color we want and let's try the yellows it doesn't do anything just let's keep it like that and then finally in the luminance this is where we're gonna like now we made the color we want but now we want it to be darker like more brownish so we're gonna darken in the luminance some of the colors I'm gonna actually darken the reds a little bit something like that then I'm gonna play with the yellows doesn't do anything and finally the oranges I can actually darken it or brighten it I'm gonna darken it a little bit and then I'm gonna add some brightness using the dodge and burn later on and let's kill we have some blue actually let's see like the rest of the color let's brighten the blue so we bring like the highlights in the t-shirt and the aquas doesn't do anything the purples let's brighten and let's brighten everything but in the saturation I don't want to have like some sort of blue on my t-shirt or anything the background we're gonna cut it anyway so it doesn't matter I don't want any colors for now except like the skin tones then I'm gonna go to the HSL in the highlights I'm gonna add some little bit of like brown color this is like if I go too strong but I'm gonna just add like something like 4% and in the shadows I'm gonna pick a color between the cyan and the blue and I'm gonna add some in the shadow but just again very subtle something like four five percent and this is like the preset let's create a new preset let's call it Vijay Mahar in door and this is gonna be linked in the description straight to my Google Drive you can download it and use it and then what I did next was some fixation for the top parts of the hair then I added the background it's just like a blue color and I added some textures in soft light and overlay mood just to give it a little bit of a life and then I made like a curve it was so contrasty so I toned it down a little bit and I placed my layer again then I did some dodging and burning this is like very important this is important in retouching when you dodge and burn you take like the, the, the black parts in the face and you brighten them up and you do the opposite also if I show you the mask look at this area here the cheekbone if I show you the mask I brighten the cheekbone a little bit this is to make my face pop out a little bit like Vijay Mahar does and then another dodge and burn overall on the whole face to bring it out a little bit then here I added some sort of blue in the shadows to match the background and here I darkened the very bright areas a little bit I want everything to, lay, to be a little bit dark so the attention is on my face then I did this a hue saturation layer of the highlights I'm gonna show you the mask this is how the mask looks like I took every single highlight and I walked over it with a brush and brightened it up and added some color then I toned the eyes as you can see down just a little bit I didn't want to look like a vampire and finally I did some coloring some gradient mapping and color balance and then I realized my face is actually turning so much like a tomato and it's being a lot red so I created a hue saturation layer just to tone it down a little bit and then I merged everything and this is like the frequency separation part like there is million of tutorials on how to do frequency separation so I'm just gonna go through it really fast you create a layer which is blurred that denies the texture and then you create a texture layer using apply image this is like the texture layer and this is the blurred layer together they give you like the full image and then in the middle you try 
to go on with the brush to balance the color of the face without harming the texture and finally I did a curves adjustment to sculpt like more of the face and hue saturation to adjust the orange color a little bit it's too like it's too mean I mean like tomato red now it's more to the brown color and finally I merged everything and this is like the Vijay Mahar version and this is my version of it and for the second photo things are gonna be a little bit different we're gonna go outdoors this is the roof actually of the place I'm living oh my god this. and this is where we will be shooting as you can see we have here like some sort of like shadow and sun so I'm gonna be shooting here at the sun with this wall as my background so you can see I got my tripod set up here and I'll be shooting something like that but of course like tighter And now for photo number two, this is straight out of camera. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this is like two yellow oranges. So I'm gonna bring down the temperature something until I lose that like very strong orange look I had. And I'm gonna, I guess it's also like a lower down just the magenta just a little bit to get it. Then I'm gonna increase the highlights. Actually, this photo doesn't have much highlights, so I'm gonna increase it just a little bit along with adding some contrast. Then I'm gonna decrease the shadows, bring them down so that we have more detail. And this preset worked for outdoor, the other one was for indoors. And then I'm gonna bring back the whites a little bit and open the blacks a little bit. I don't want something totally black. And finally, I'm gonna pump up the clarity just a little bit to give the photo some sort of a better look and I guess I always like to do that if the skin tones is too strong I'm gonna reduce the vibrance by let's say 21 and then increase the saturation by the same amount and in the colors I'm gonna push actually a little bit towards the yellow I believe this is too orange just a little bit to you towards the yellow then in the saturation I'm gonna push the reds a little bit stronger and bring down the orange and the yellow I guess this is too strong with the orange let's bring back just a little bit and let's bring back a little bit yellow and finally in the luminance this is where I do like most of the change I want it to look more like brownish look so I'm gonna bring it down but this is too strong I guess so I'm gonna compensate by brightening the yellows just a little bit and I'm gonna bring this down so, so now you can see uh, let me press P to show you the before and the after you see already like big big change and then let's go to the split toning like always I'll add just a little bit of orange to the highlights and just a little bit of blue cyan to the shadows and the last thing I like to do is like sometimes this panel here the color calibration I would play around with colors just a little bit to see the effect I'm having this is making it too yellowish this is actually like this much better let's pull this one like that I guess something here much better and something like that I guess now we're good to go save the preset let's save it let's call it Vijay Mahar out door and also it's gonna be linked in the description this is the color of the background I saw he was using it's a little bit dark then bright then a little bit dark with the stars and the sky so I added I made it a little bit even brighter then this is actually like some sort of mountains but I blurred them it's like a mountain skyline and then I have this sky it's just a normal sky but I made it so bright and erased the bottom part so now I got the colors I wanted somehow and then it's time to add like the fire somewhere here so I start playing around with a lot of flame stock images this is actually was a rocket image and 
this is what I got so I then I keep like looking at his photo and then tone down the colors a little bit add some blue in the shadows add make it the fire look more red and then I drew on top of everything using brushes another fire then adjusting the colors again and then adding even more smoke and darkness into it until I was satisfied with the fire look then it's time to add like some sort of sparkles like he always does in his photos this is like a sparkle let me show you how it look like this is like the the original image how it's looking but when you put it in screen mode all the black disappears so you're only left with the bright sparkle area and this is like the top sparkles here at the top and then the photo of earth i masked out this photo then added some sort of shadow at the bottom area where i'm catching it and adjusted the colors and the saturation a little bit and now it's time to go to editing myself so the first thing i did was brighten my face a little bit then i started adjusting the color and the highlights just a little bit you can see here some of the highlights on the t-shirt and then you can see the hue saturation you can see like the highlights on the t-shirt let me show you the curve this is like the highlights i'm stressing on the highlights that i already have on the t-shirt and another bright area here to compensate the flames on the left then some dodging and burning to my face you can see what they did the dodging and burning they help draw out your face just a little bit and use saturation to adjust the color of the face i wasn't satisfied and still i guess i'm gonna change it even more let's see yes and now i changed it even more to the color i wanted but it's too bright i guess i guess i'll fix it on later and then this is like just more shadow to make it look like i'm actually holding the earth and finally i did like darkened everything because things were a little bit bright but i wasn't satisfied with the skin colors i had so i darkened it a little bit and made it more towards the yellow more than it was towards the red as you can see and then i got this thing that they were and let me show you like the original picture this guy i felt sorry for him actually he wanted like to do like a photo shoot but he couldn't so he did this photo and i used it and got this out of it and then using like warping it around i was able to adjust it to my face and pull these th strings all the way into my hair but you can see my nose is pointing out here somehow so i just cloned it out and drew some shadow below of it so it looks like it's realistic under on top of my face and finally i wanted to add some sort of a touch so i added this is like a skull i worked it to the front and put it on overlay and added some sort of a pirate skull because why not pirates are actually awesome and i guess that's it for this photo you can see here like his version of it and my version of it usually when i look at his work actually it's really good but i guess most of this because of how he looks and how he poses he's really well practiced in this area and finally this is a bonus image i also created but i'm not gonna break it down for the time of this video and i hope you already got the idea and how he edits his photos if you're still here watching the video make sure you comment down below the major difference you saw between his work and my work i would love to know down below and make sure you subscribe and give me that like button it will help me a lot and see you in the next time